And there we go. Okay, so, the next one. AD bisects angle CAB. AD bisects angle CAB. So this is angle CAB up here, so that angle is bisected. Whether you put it with tick marks in the arc or just the arc, that's fine. Therefore, what can we conclude if that angle is being bisected? Be careful, you want to have the middle letter, remember, at its vertex. So the middle letter is still going to be what in the next one? A. CAD works or DAC, I would take either one. So they're congruent. Again, definition of what? Angle bisect. Definition of angle bisect. Okay? Yes, sir? If you were given both pieces of information, yes, but we'll get into that after the Thanksgiving holiday. But they don't, they're, they're separate instances. You got me? Because I want to talk about that in a second. All right. So the reason I bring these two up first is this. To make sure you follow, and it's similar to what Nate was just talking about. In that triangle, that line is the angle bisector. A is the midpoint, though, of that segment. Just want to make sure we all understand. One doesn't necessarily mean the other. Does that make sense? So just because one passes through the midpoint doesn't mean that has to be an angle bisector. Now, if it did give you both, then the triangle is isosceles. We'll get into all that in chapter four, beginning of month. But I just want to make sure one doesn't necessarily mean the other. And you can only base your proof on what they tell you. Okay? Everybody good with that idea before moving on to the next step? Okay. So. Next one. They tell us RS is perpendicular to UT. RS is perpendicular to UT. Perpendicular lines intersect to make what kind of angles? Right, right angles. So I can say that angle RST and angle RSU are right angles. RST and RSU are right angles. All right. That is what? The definition of perpendicular lines. The definition of perpendicular lines. Everybody good? So that's what the definition of perpendicular lines is, because this is one we're going to use a lot. doesn't tell us they're congruent, it just says they're what kind of angle. Well, the lines are perpendicular, and the angles are what kind of angle? Right angle. So that's the definition of it. Everybody good? Okay. Well, that means we could then say that angle RST is congruent to angle RSU. And that's the way the book and slash the homework like to do it. We could then say that angles RST and RSU are congruent. Why? Because they're what kind of angle? Right, right angles and right angles all the way to measure how many degrees? Okay. 90 degrees. The reason would be all right angles are what? All right angles are 90 degrees, which makes them all what? Congruent. Now, as you progress in proof, if you want to go right to the second step from the first statement, that's okay. But you have to include that in the longer statement that when it becomes valuable for us to use it, that we'll talk about. Because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles that happen to be what? Congruent. So you would say perpendicular lines intersect to form congruent right angles. So we're going to combine those and start doing but in terms of Tuesday, you got to know both, because if we do this, okay, if we do this, I'm going to draw this line in, I'm going to draw that line in. I'm going to call this angle 1, that angle 2, that angle 3, and that angle 4. And it's going to be given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So that would be a statement that's given to you. 
If one was congruent to two, what could you then say is true? Which other pair is congruent? Three and four. So angle three, congruent to angle four. And from this point moving forward, you can use congruent complement theorem. You're going to spend tonight, if you haven't done it already, proving it, but then after that, you can use the congruent complement theorem. Yes, ma'am. Because complement is the same as complementary. So we, it's usually, it's like the same word. I mean, sure, it's like supplementary and supplement. Like angle one is a supplement of angle two. Same thing. Make sense? All right. Is there another way they could have told you angle one and angle two were congruent without directly telling you as a given? What would they have to say about the right? That they are, uh, complementary. We're not going to go with that. I just want to know, it. go in step. I, you just, you're missing a step. What's another way they could have given you in a given to say angle one is congruent to angle two? Angle bisect. All right? They could have said it was an angle bisect. All right? All of those things, ladies and gentlemen, those things, and this, not necessarily everything to the right, but that, that, and this over here, you are responsible for for Tuesday. Okay, you're responsible for Tuesday. This, it's good that you know it, but you're probably not going to need that for Tuesday. All right? Everybody good? Okay, let's go to the next page. All right. Properties. One that you need, one that you're not going to need yet, but you're going to need eventually. And the first one, I got intersecting lines. And as soon as I have intersecting lines, what kind of angles do I have? The first thing that should come to mind, vertical angles. And vertical angles are always going to be what? Con, front. So I'm going to call this one. I'm going to call that two. So I'm allowed to say just from the diagram that angle one is congruent to angle two. Now, this is important. Vertical angle property. Vertical angle property. That is one of the must when you write a proof. It is not the definition of vertical angle. They never mention the congruency in vertical angle. They only mention it later on. Make sense? So that means angle one is congruent to angle two by the vertical angle property. And they don't have to tell you anything else. You can get it right from a diagram. Make sense? Okay. Now, if I go in the one right next to it. All right. Give me a numerical value for segment AB. Any number at all? 32. 32. All right. Well, they're saying AB is congruent to CD. So CD would also have to be what? 32. BC would be X. AC would then be represented by what algebraic expression? AC. So this entire thing would be what? 32 plus X. All right. BD, which is there to there, would be what? 32 plus X. Is 32 plus X the same as 32 plus X, no matter what X is? Yes. yes. If this was a different number than 32, would that number still be plus X? And that would still be the same number plus X. So no matter what numbers we pick, the resulting segments would always be what? The same. Con through. All right? So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, if they give you that diagram, you are allowed to conclude that AC is congruent to BD. Now, when you explain it, you can do two things. Because some people are good at just explaining what it is. Some people want to just memorize stuff. Okay, if you're just going to memorize stuff, that's called the overlapping, O-V-R-L-A-P-P-I-N-G, congruent segment property. So if you want to memorize it, that's what it is. It's called overlapping congruent segment property. All right, then if the two outside segments are congruent, so they're overlapping things. 
But if you can't remember that, which is completely understandable, all you have to do is explain what it is. And say that if two segments are congruent, by adding the same segment to both, the result is what? Congruent. Or adding the same segment to congruent segments results in what? Congruent segments. What you can't use is segment addition postulates. Segment addition postulates would state AB plus BC equals what? AC. Yes, sir. All right. This you need for Tuesday. You need to know vertical angles. The other one you don't need yet, but we'll eventually talk about. It. All right. So you need to know about your vertical angles for Tuesday. Got me? All right. You take a moment to work on that one. You take a moment to work on that one. Those three dots just mean therefore. So whatever your conclusion is. BC is congruent to CD, therefore AB is congruent to what? CD. E is congruent to F, F is congruent to G, therefore angle E is congruent to angle G. By what property? Transitive property. It's a must for Tuesday. Transitive property. You don't have to say congruence. You don't have to say equality. You just have to put transitive property. Okay, on the back. Now, you don't have to use it in a proof on Monday, on Tuesday, but you do need to be able to identify it. So here's the idea. Drawn separately, that's triangle ABD, and that's triangle BDC. So that's the two triangles drawn separately. What segment do you notice is in both? BD. It. So therefore we can say BD is congruent to BD. And you have to know for Tuesday that that is an example of the reflexive property. It will not be in a proof, but like I said, you'll have a short answer section where it tells you where you have to identify the property. So that's the reflexive property. All right. So it's not going to be in a proof, but you've got to be able to identify when something's equal or congruent to itself. That's the reflexive property. Good? And that's one's going to be very important this year. Now, if we do the same thing over here, that's triangle ABC. That's triangle DBC. Again, what segment shows up twice? BC. So BC is congruent to BC once again by the reflexive property. All right. So again, you don't have to use it in a proof on Tuesday, but you need to be able to identify it in the short answer section. Whenever something's equal to itself, it is the reflexive property. 
property or posture or whatever, is that going to be a lot of points taken off? Or? The only one that's huge is vertical. That's that one you would lose a tremendous, it's not a tremendous, but you would lose almost all the credit. Uh, the only th you, you don't really have to use postulate much, because it's the same side interior is what we're going to use most of the time. And if you just use SSI, you're going to be fine. You know what I mean? Like when you use like the parallel lines one, like all the theorem, you can just abbreviate it with the AIA. So that's really the vertical angle one is really the only one you got to be that worried about. All right, overlooked and brand new stuff. So let's see what we know. Some vocab. Anybody think they know what equilateral means? All sides are congruent. I understand what you mean by the same, but eventually we're just going to translate. So we could say AB is congruent to BC, congruent to CD, congruent to AD. Is that a vocabulary term, you think, equilateral? Yes, so the reason would be definition of equilateral. Again, you don't need it for Tuesday, but eventually we're going to introduce it into some proofs. Good? All right, it's next door neighbor, equal angular. What do you think that means? All angles are congruent. So angle H, congruent to angle E, congruent to angle F, congruent to angle G. They are right angles, but they don't all have to be right angles in any figure. All right, so angle E, congruent to angle F, congruent to angle G, congruent to angle H. Definition of equal angular. All right, so those are a pair of vocab terms. Again, you don't need them for Tuesday, but eventually you're going to need them for when we do triangle congruency beginning tomorrow and then the Monday, and then once we come back from break. Good? All right, on the back. You definitely need to know this. If angle one is congruent to angle four, if angle one is congruent to angle four, they form what with two and three? What are they called? Linear pairs. So angle two, congruent to angle three, because linear pairs are what? Supplementary. But rather than write all that, we're just going to say congruent supplement theorem. So we don't have to talk about, so we developed this. We talked about linear pairs. We subtracted, made them equal to each other, and used the transverse properties. You don't have to do that. You can just use congruent supplement theorem in your doctor. All right. Good. And then to help you with tonight's homework, PQ is perpendicular to PS, which indicates what kind of angle is formed. 90 degrees. PR is perpendicular to PT, so that's also what? 90 degrees. If PQ is perpendicular to PS, that means this angle is 90 degrees. God bless. If PR is perpendicular to PT, that means that angle is also 90 degrees. What angle shows up in both pairs? 2. Is 2 equal to itself? Yep. So therefore, we can say angle 1 congruent to angle 3. The only difference is instead of supplementary, they are complementary. So congruent complement theorem. And this goes back to what Nate was asking before. Like if you wrote congruent complement property instead of theorem, that's okay. Because you are you're showing me you understand what we're talking. Alright. Yes, ma'am. A property is something we developed in class. A theorem is something that was formally introduced as a theorem in your notes. Okay. Same thing with postulates. Right? 
So you may want to just give a rundown of yourself of everything in your notes and just kind of like start breaking those down. But that's up to you. All right. Now, we return to our friend, the circle, whose name is what? S. That means S is the center. So that means ST, SU, and SV are all what? Why? I agree with you. You're absolutely right. Because they're all like the radius. They're radius. Okay. So, the statement of congruence is ST is congruent to SU, congruent to SV. That's the statement that you're allowed to say. With circles and that, you have a wide range of things you can answer. Alright? So, in other words, the definition of a circle is a plane figure where all points are the same distance from the center. Is that what that's saying? Yes. So, could you use definition of a circle and be okay? Yes. yes. Alright? Since radii are actually segments, not segments, could you use property of a circle and be okay? Sure. Or you can simply say what we're concluding, which is what? All radii are what? Congruent. Radii is with two eyes, by the way. Rad and then two eyes. Everybody good with that? So when you're working with circles, now notice, we never mentioned what? What segments? UV. Okay, we never mentioned UV because you can't make any conclusions about it. Right? You can't man, make any conclusions about it. But if we said, let's say UV was congruent to ST. If UV was congruent to ST, would it be congruent to the other two radii as well? Yes, by what property rhymes with mantidus? Transitive. And then if that was the case, are all sides of that figure congruent? Yes. So it would be what type of triangle? We just went through it in our notes. Equilateral. All right? Equilateral. Good. And then the last one, K and NLM are right angles. That means they both measure how many degrees? 90. 90. So angle K is congruent to angle NLM. All right angles are congruent. All right angles are congruent. All right. I just want to shut this down for a second and then we'll talk. Stop recording.